Let me tell you something about my family. I come from a, a very fun-loving family. I have this lovely mother who is uh, as timid as can be, but super powerful on the inside, but wouldn't hurt a fly. And I have a father who's extremely dynamic, but very, very funny. And he has these little jokes that he cracks. And I want to share with you one that he did and how it transcended. So I had the opportunity to study in America in college. And I had a, I had a lot of friends come visit, but one of my buddies, my roommates from college, very close friend of mine, came to visit uh, India in my home in Ahmedabad. He came to visit, and this was his first time leaving the country. He had never left the US before. A white guy had come to India for the first time, came in, and I remember it was dinner time when my father came home from office. My father came home, we were sitting on the dining table, and my, as I said, he's a funny man. So he came in and he said, Kent, don't worry, I've made the food today. I've cooked everything. I hope you like it, because if you don't, my wife beats me. And it's one of those things where Bibi Marti is a joke, and so all of us are laughing, we're you know, having a ball deck. My friend didn't say anything. At night, I go back to my room at about midnight, he walks in, knocks gently, comes in, and he says, yes, you know. You're a great friend of mine. You're a good man, and you have a good family, and I just want to tell you that we know some good lawyers in America. If you ever need me, that your father is uh, going through, please let me know. So, oh shit. Jokes don't transcend. You know, once I was in Xiamen for a logistics conference in uh, uh, China, and I was there, and in India we have this culture where we touch someone's feet when we meet someone out of respect. So I, I've been, I grew up with that. So I was in China, and this man was an incredible businessman, elderly fellow, must be 70, 75. He came in, and instinctively I bowed down to touch his feet. I bow down, and he takes a karate move. He just straight, he thought I was going for his feet. He wanted to hit me at this point, and we had absolutely no connect. Gestures don't transcend. Have you guys ever wondered why this room is filled with us human beings and not monkeys, uh, not we're monkeys, but not lions or not cheetahs or not elephants? Why did they evolve and we did? And by the way, for a lot of you, we did not evolve from monkeys. We evolved from a type of monkey. Monkeys have common ancestry with us, but the Australopithecus, and then the Australohabilis, the Australo, the, uh, the uh, uh, Neanderthalus, and then the Homo sapiens. You know, we evolved and no other species did. I always wonder why the hell was it that we evolved? And the answer to this question is we evolved as human beings only and only because of one difference that we had that no one else did. And that one difference was human connection. The one difference was our ability to cooperate, reciprocate, and connect with each other that led to our evolution. Okay. So, since that was the one thing that led us to evolve, one more slide please. Since that was the one thing that led us to evolve, I wonder what would happen to the world now, because here's my big fat claim for today. My claim is that all of us as human beings have evolved because of human connection and we are getting worse at it. In the new age of technology, etc., that we're growing, the next generation is not going to be able to connect as we do. It's not going to be able to influence as we do. What is it that we can do to change the course of the future? And I want to share with you a few things that have really impacted me. Now here's a story that I haven't shared with many, so it will come as a surprise, but anyways. The most excited I have ever been in my life was when I had the opportunity to go study abroad uh, for the first time ever at the University of California in Los Angeles. So I got into college and I was super excited, but the best moment of my life was when I boarded that plane from Ahmedabad to Dubai and Dubai to Los Angeles. I was so happy. I mean, I was going to go live my dream. I was going to go get an education that no one else, uh, that people could only dream of. And I was just, all, all of the things I'd seen, heard about college, they were all going to come to life. And super excited, I get that. We reach Los Angeles and the American education system is superb. It's superb because they really ensure that all of us, you know, get to mingle and we get to know each other. So the first three days is something called the freshman orientation. And in that freshman orientation, they have all these structured programs where we get to interact, talk, uh, you know, mingle with each other. So the first day during the day was all planned. They made us sit in round tables, they made us sit, they made us play games. And I thought I was doing well, I connected. Until at about 8 p.m., they opened out the entire forum and they said, okay guys, open party. Open party, that should have been fun. And the instructors and the volunteers, everyone left and it was just a bunch of freshmen, first year college students, first day of their lives at UCLA. We were left in this place with 
dark, uh, dark lights, some music, and allowed to party. And I thought, oh my God, I've already made so many friends, I'm going to go out and connect. So I started to go and try to talk to people. I tried. No connect. I tried being funny. No connect. I tried to be smart. No connect. I tried telling stories. No connect. There was nothing that I could do which would make someone have a long conversation with me. And I had absolutely no way to connect with anyone in that hall. And I felt like absolute shit. At about 2 a.m. in the morning, I found myself in the bathroom of that club area that we were in, in tears. And I was shattered because not just was every dream of mine shattered, I was shattered because I was worthless. I was so worthless that not one person in that room wanted to have a conversation with me. And it was not just as big as me not being good enough at something I do. I just wasn't good enough for anyone. Today, not many years since, I got invited around the world to speak about building human connection and networking. Hell, I run an organization that thrives on building connections and networking and hence doing business and growing ourselves. And that shift that happened in my life is a shift that happened because of something that I think I mastered. And I was able to master that and I want to share it with us because nothing is more important than the value of human connection. When I put it in thought, when I think about how I came about this journey, it happened because I was once in, uh, again in the US and I, I had to drive for the first time in my life. And it was a crazy story, I'm not going to tell you all of it, but it was the first time I'm driving a 1986 Corolla and I'm supposed to go from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. And the guys who were supposed to be driving had one too many and they couldn't drive anymore. I was the only one, no driver's license, nothing. I sit on the driver's seat. And I had to drive, so I started driving on the streets, no problem, I've driven in India, and then I got on the freeway. I get on the freeway, and about 20 seconds in, I almost had a panic attack. I didn't know what the hell was going on, it was too fast for me. I pulled over on the shoulder and I sat there. And I looked to my left and I looked at the cars going. I looked, and I looked, and I looked. All I did was I observed. I observed how they show their indicator. I observed how they take over someone. I observed the speed they're going at, when they break, when they don't. And about five minutes in, I was on the road and I was driving and I made Las, uh, Los Angeles, Las Vegas in under three and a half hours. That's like 95 kilometers an hour. Very, very illegal, but it was incredible. Because the one thing that I learned to do was observe. And hence I came up with this thing that I call the Holy Trinity. And I want to share that with you. The Holy Trinity looks like this. Now keep going. Keep going. Okay. The Holy Trinity looks like this. You observe, you find common ground, and you adapt. And let me tell you about all three of these things. The first one was observe, and I've shared with you what observation meant, but I want to, tell, I want to, I want to share a story about finding common ground because this one really got me and I'm sure it'll get you too. So once uh, I had the opportunity, so while I was, I, I was part of this startup and I was looking for funds, one of my friends said her husband uh, had just received 6,000 crores for a land deal that he had closed uh, in Gujarat. And he lives in the UK, he's coming down after years to India, and he would like to discuss certain investment opportunities. Now, 6,000 crores is a billion dollars, that's a lot of money. I said, oh my God, whatever happens, I have to go. So I happened to go meet him in his apartment, and I was wearing a suit, because I'd just come out of a BNI meeting, one of the things I do, I'm wearing a suit, I drive a German car, I didn't think much of it, I go park in his lot, and I go into his living room. I go inside, and in my head, I had this image of a British person sitting there, British Indian, right? But I go in, and there's a man eating pan, wearing a white kurta, which is a long Indian thing, uh, wearing that long white kurta, and just sitting there. And I walked in, and here's the first thing he told me. He said, the British left, but tumhe chhod I said, oh shit, this is not how I expected to start a 6,000 crore deal. And I'm sitting there, and he says, why do you drive that car? He says, why don't you use Tata Mahindra, all these Indian makes? Why are you wearing a suit? Why the hell do you have a phone that's not made here? Why, why, when he kept, I mean, he hated me and he kept putting me down the whole time. And I tried to argue, you know, I'm usually very good with people at this time. So I'm trying to tell him that, hey, look, I, uh, you know, I want to make India great. That's why we're starting this company and all kinds of stuff, but no connect. And I don't know what happened, but for some reason, the conversation came to me saying, well, my family is from Porbandar, which is in Gujarat. And he said, oh really, my family is from Porbandar too, I was born there. I said, oh, kya baat karte? He said, yeah, and 
I could not tell you why I said it, but I said one of my oldest memories from childhood is this guy on the street who used to pop a goatee uh, in a bottle. That marble goes in and the soda comes out and he'd make a masala soda. He said, Raju, you know Raju? I don't know Raju. I said, yeah, I know Raju. My God, Raju is such a great guy. He makes the best goatee soda in the world. And as soon as he spoke about Raju, there's a smile on his face, twinkle in his eyes, puts his hammer on my shoulder, tells his wife, but chai to <laughs> Shit. We've been friends ever since. Because sometimes all we need to find is common ground. One little piece of information will take you through miles and miles of stuff. You never know. And the third lesson was a lesson that I call ADAPT. But ADAPT that is actually from NLP, if some of you know NLP, and I love it, is matching and mirroring. But let me talk to you about adaption. So, I had the opportunity to be in uh, Europe for the past 50 days in 2018 and I was there for about 40 days and uh, I visited Ukraine. Now if you go to Ukraine as an Indian citizen, you get a visa on arrival, but there's a process. You need to fill out a form and the form has to be printed and ready with you. Unfortunately, uh, someone messed up on my team and I did not have the visa application, but I thought, culling it all. Now if you've been to Ukraine, Ukraine is a lot like our country, you know, a lot of things can happen. But I did not expect this. So I go to Ukraine, I land in Kiev, and I get out of the plane, come inside. I remember crossing, there's a small smoking room on the right. You go straight, there's a sign that says, visa on arrival. I said, great. I walk in there, and there's a Chinese man and his wife standing there, and there's only two. So I went up, I said, how long have you been waiting? He said, uh, dude, we've been here for about 10, 15 minutes. I said, okay, great, I'll wait. We waited, and no one showed up. So about 20 minutes in, I see the Chinese man go speak to one of the security guards and the security guards points in the direction of a door that says consular services. So the Chinese man's walking, so I start walking behind him, I didn't want to be left out. So I walk behind him and I see him open the door and peek his head in this room that says consular services. And he peeks his, and as soon as he peeks his head in, all I hear is, get out, get out, get out now. And I said, oh my God, what the hell just happened? So I turn around and I see the Chinese man running behind me and he's red in the face. He comes to me and the Chinese man said, that guy's crazy. And there's a guy in a red shirt and blue jeans that walks out of that door with a gun in his hand and says, who you call crazy? Who, me crazy? I know crazy. Who you call crazy? You sleep in airport tonight. All of you sleep in airport. What the hell just happened? And he was shocked. The guys with the security team, they're also just standing there. They didn't know what to say. They look at us and say, crazy, we can't do anything. Different department. I didn't want to sleep in Ukraine's airport for I don't know how many days without a visa. So I walk out and I'm, I'm, I'm still taking this in when I see the guy in the red come out from the corner of my eye. I see him walk around and I saw that he's going to the smoking room. I said, oh great, so I start following him, and while he's going, I like cut forward and I go inside the room first. And while he enters, I put my hand up and I say, hey. Now when you say hey to someone, what's gonna happen? I expected him to say hey, but he just looks around and he says, you say hey to me? I said, yeah. He said, why, you don't know me? I said, and immediately I knew I needed to adapt, so I look at him and I said, yeah, I don't know you, but you look like a man who can say hi to a stranger, and his tone. And he suddenly takes a step back and he nods and he points to the seat, so I sat. I sit down, I put my phone on the seat and he picks up the phone and starts to play with my phone. He's trying to open it with his eyes and do all kinds of stuff, takes out the cover. I thought, I'm done, <laughs> this guy's gonna take my phone now. Put my hand out and he puts my phone back in my hand. And I said, look, these are my documents. I know it's a little screwed up, can you help me? He said, not even God can help you, but I can help you if you give me a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars. And I looked at him, I said, well, look, I'll give you $100, but I will not give you a single piece of document. You have to stamp it. And no one can do that. So he like looks at me with this smile and he says, okay, you come. So I go to the visa on arrival counter. I go sit, stand there, and he, the Chinese man standing there, and he says, China out, India in. I said, okay. I go in and I say, sir. He says, well, you know, I uh, used to live in Delhi. I said, oh great, and I was connecting with this guy. I said, really, you're born in, he said, I was born in Delhi. I said, you're born in Delhi? You're a very, very white man. What are you doing in Delhi? And uh, he looks at me and he said, why? I can't be from Delhi. I said, no, it's a great place. You, you kind of look Indian, you know, a little bit. He doesn't. And uh, he says, well, my family were missionaries in Delhi, in India. I said, oh, you know, I also follow the, uh, you know, as Benny would say, I, I follow the, light of God and you know I love it and God is an amazing thing. He says, no, no, I think you don't understand my English. They were mercenaries in Delhi. They used to kill people for a living. 
and immediately I say, well, you know what, it's sometimes you got to kill people, man. You, you, killing people is what there is, and we connect on this point. And the man, you will not believe it, the man may be slid down on his computer, wrote down my essay, took the printout, took his digital camera, took my photo, put it in, prints it out, goes inside, comes back out with my passport and says that'll be $103 for the visa, which was the cost. And I had $100 bills, so I knew that other $100 was not coming back. I gave him $200. Lo and behold, and I, I couldn't make this up if I wanted to, about three minutes later, he comes back with my passport, a receipt, and he returns $97 to me, gives me a hug and says, if you're ever back at the airport, I'd love to connect. Now, what happened here was all we needed to do was match someone's personality, mirror what he was doing, adapt with who you are. Because these are things I want to share with you in terms of what can happen in the larger scope of getting to know people, of forming a real connection. But while I tell you this, I do want to tell you something that I strongly believe in. I strongly believe that it isn't about you just, you just learning these things and going out there and using them. But I call, I call this the WTF cycle. And if you master the WTF cycle, everything will fall in place. Because guys, this world isn't just about learning how to connect, but it's about becoming someone who people want to connect with. And I urge you first to be your own you, back in the middle, because people don't like people who want to be someone else. People like people who are like them. Become you and we are like each other. So the first step is the W in the WTF, which is work on yourself. Work on yourself, build yourself, make yourself into the man that people want to connect with, the woman that people want to sit next to. Work, work out. Go, I mean, look at all the people that have spoken. Go spend some time on your body. Feed your mind. Read some books. Feed your body with the right kind of food. Look the way you want to look. Look the way you think you want to meet people to look. Become that person. Second and the most important to me is tell stories and work on your stories. I know you're, you're sitting here thinking, yes, you have some great stories. How did this guy come up with these stories? But I'm telling you, each one of you sitting here, each one of you listening has stories beyond measure. You have some extraordinary stories in your life. The only thing is, you don't know you have these stories and you never remember them. I urge you to please just, I don't, here's a tip that I use. Open Evernote. There's an app called Evernote or notes on your phone. Start typing your stories. Put them there and remember them. And go back and remember them. And, and here's an add-on. Sometimes when you're having a horrible time, when you're having the worst day of your life at an airport, you're stuck in the middle of a very, very bad day, catch yourself and tell yourself you're in the middle of a story. Three months down the line or six months down the line, you're going to be sharing the story with someone and suddenly your perception on life will change. Instead of fear, it will become curiosity because it's just a story. Remember your stories, tell them and master them will get you connect like never before. And finally, follow through. We have the opportunity to really build our lives resume. resume. If you've made a commitment, follow through with it. Follow through. People like authenticity, genuinity, be that. And finally, I want to end by saying that I meet some great people in the world who are who are so engrossed, so engrossed in being, uh, uh, they have everything they want in the world. They have all the money, they have all the riches, but they're still bored thoroughly bored with life. And I study them and I look at them and here's what I found. I found that they're still bored because a lot of us spend too much time of our lives being interesting. Imagine how great would this world be if we spent just a little bit of time being interested. Thank you.